Okay. Hello, everyone. I want you to meet Goose. So Goose is an AI agent that works right on your machine. It's ready to handle development tasks out of the box from writing and debugging code to setting up development environments. And there's been a lot of talk about AI agents over the last few months, and that's because we believe this is where we'll really start to see value out of AI. So what are AI agents exactly? When you interact with chatbots, like ChatGPT, for example, you can ask it how to do something, right? And it'll give you step-by-step -step instructions. For example, if I ran into an error while coding, I could paste that error into ChatGPT and ask it to help me debug. But because ChatGPT doesn't have access to my code base, it's gonna speculate about the cause of my error, and it's gonna give me a couple of possible solutions to try. And then I'm gonna manually try, wait, we went too far, did we? No, okay. <laughs> and then we're gonna, I'm gonna manually try the solutions that they've given me, so I'm taking it, okay, I'm gonna try this, all right. And if that doesn't work, I'm gonna come and paste what happened in there, and we're gonna do this over and over until we figure it out, or I just give up. Um, so AI agents greatly simplify this flow by talking with the LLM on my behalf. Okay, this PowerPoint, so I don't know how to make this play. Let me see. No. How I make the videos play? I think, can you? Don't get stressed, okay? I won't get stressed. All right. I think Wait, let me if see. we double click, like, Oh, I'm not on the internet either. Okay, don't worry about it. Are you sure? Yeah. We can get you there. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, just, I'm okay. just gonna go with it. Y'all right, with me, right? So envision this like actually running. <laughs> but um, I can basically, this is a uh, goose on the right, and then on the left is the IDE, right? And so I can say, hey, Goose, can you fix my error? And then Goose will, I don't have to explain like what's going on, it just kind of knows because it's connected to my system. So in this case, my IDE. And it can see why the error is incur occurring, and instead of telling me how to fix it, it's just gonna fix it on my behalf, and it'll let me know what it did to do that, all right? Okay, so how does all of this work exactly? Well, the agent sits between the user and the LLM. So Goose allows you to connect with the LLM of your choice, right? So it's not a closed system. That could be models from OpenAI, from Anthropic, from Google, or even local open source models from Olama. So the LLM provides cognitive abilities to the AI agents, and most AI agents, like Goose, will have this chat interface themselves. You type in your prompt, and then the agent will send your prompt to the LLM. At the same time, the agent will also inform the LLM of what it has access to. So let's look at what was happening under the covers when I asked Goose to fix my null pointer exception. So I typed my request into Goose's chat interface, and then Goose sent my prompt to my chosen LLM and also let the LLM know what it has, uh, what tools it has. So tools. Tools are one of the most important aspects of Agentic AI because this is what, in, oh, I didn't see all y'all up there, chat. Um, <laughs> tools are what enable the agent to interact with external APIs and execute actions. So the tools themselves are essentially functions that interface with API endpoints. And in the example that I didn't show you, but you saw, um, I added a JetBrains extension to Goose, and with that, Goose now has tools for interacting with code within a JetBrains IDE. So Goose is not limited to one IDE. It could work um, in VS Code and any of the JetBrains extensions or any other code editor. Um, JetBrains developed these tools themselves to enable agents to work with them. 
So here, Goose is saying, the user is requesting that I fix a null pointer exception in the user service.java file, and I have tools to read files, to analyze code, to edit files, and to run tests. So it's letting the LLM know what it needs to do and then what tools it has as, at its disposal. So the LLM is going to analyze that request and then select the appropriate tool from the list. So the LLM is saying, oh, you, you can read the file? That would be super helpful. Do that and then provide me with the results. And so Goose will then send the uh, file as a resource. The agent then executes read file and sends the output back to the LLM. The LLM recognizes the issue, which is that the DB variable is not initialized, and now it selects another tool, the edit file, to fix the issue. And notice it's saying, okay, in this particular file, I want you to go to this line number and replace the text that's there with this new text. The agent executes edit file to fix the user service.java and outputs what it's doing to the user. It also is gonna inform the LLM and then the LLM determines, okay, this will be a good time to probably run the test to confirm the change. So it tells the agent to execute the run test tool. And the agent does so and then passes the results back to the LLM who then tells the agent what to tell the user. So this is where you get your, okay, everything's done, anything else you want me to do type of message. Now that was just the use of one extension, but there's almost 2,000 extensions and this list is growing on a daily basis. You can add any of these extensions to Goose and it'll know how to use it thanks to an open standard called the Model Context Protocol, also known as MCP. Any MCP folks in the room? Hey, my tribe. Okay, so with this protocol, Anyone can make an MCP server that exposes APIs or data through tools. And you can add any of these MCP servers to Goose as extensions. So say for example that I added extensions for a dev tool, a drive system, and a data system. So my agent can now do some pretty interesting things that would otherwise be tedious for me to do manually. For example, I can say, hey Goose, can you maybe create a quarterly revenue report based on info that's in my database, include references to previous financial analysis docs from my Google Drive, and then write a report and save it to my file system, right? Um, I could do something like say, hey, can you update my API to handle this new field that's in the database and follow the best practices that's in my outline in my Google Drive? And Goose is gonna switch between these extensions to complete that task end to end. Out of the box, Goose comes with, oh look, the video's playing, look at us. Yeah. All right, so out of the box, Goose um, comes with a developer extension and it includes tools for things like editing, taking screenshots, running shell commands, very helpful. So before adding any extensions at all, you could use Goose to like organize your messy desktop, for example. Um, the GitHub extension, this one is one of my personal favorites. So not only can you get Goose to write code for you, but you can also have it do things like create a repo, make a pull request on your behalf. For this one, I needed to add a GitHub API key and I limited Goose's access to only a few repositories. Goose can even turn ideas into code. So using the Figma extension, you can ask Goose to take a design, which is on the left, and then within a few minutes, it'll actually build out the app, which is on the right. Goose is available as both a desktop app as well as a CLI. Um, here I've added an extension for Google Maps, which requires an API key. And in this session, I'm asking Goose to help me get around Mardi Gras traffic in New Orleans, in case you haven't heard from my accent, that's where I'm from. Um, notice Goose here is using two extensions to help me. The Fetch um, to scrape the parade schedule and route, and then Google Maps to get location and determine um, if it's on the route. And I love the ability to like mix and match the extensions to accomplish pretty much anything I wanna do. 
On the Goose website, we have a few MCP servers listed as extensions, some that we've built ourselves, such as the developer um, extension, that's the one I showed you about running the shell commands and things, computer controller, which can run like Apple scripts, do pretty neat stuff, it could browse the web, um, and then memory, which can hold like, uh, you know, data that I want to persist across multiple sessions. And then there's some community ones listed here as well. And like I mentioned, anyone can create an MCP server. There's even MCP SDKs in Python, TypeScript, Java, and Kotlin if you want to turn your favorite API into an MCP server. So there's quite a few directories out there listing. Right now there's about 1,700 probably today um, MCP servers. But heads up, the quality of them could vary because like I said, anyone can create them, so not all of them were created by the vendors themselves. As for the LLMs, like I said, you can bring your own LLM, whatever LLM you want to use, um, but you wanna make sure that it supports tool calling because remember, that's how the agents execute tasks. So there's a couple of leaderboards out there comparing models specifically for use with agents. One is the Berkeley Function Calling Leaderboard and the other is Galileo. Personally, I found that um, Claude Sonnet's tool calling capabilities are the most effective right now for operating Goose extensions. But, as we all know, the LLM landscape is quickly evolving. <laughs> so, we're so encouraged. Um, Goose was trending as number one on GitHub for a while. Um, there's an article in Forbes today about it. So, there's a lot of great reception. We're so encouraged about it. And we invite the AI community to build with us. So, it's all open source. Anything that you want to see, you can build it or just kind of open an issue. And we'll tend to that as well. But I think together we can achieve a level of innovation that no closed system can match. Thank you. Thank you.